Okay, once the, those of you just coming in, please silence your cell phones and all the other things that I always say. Um, Jay, give us an overview, please. Yeah, um, great college baseball game. Uh, two best teams in the country. A uh, ton of execution by both teams from the mound. Um, great defensive plays. Really good quality of bats. Um, Ty was outstanding tonight. Um, really hard to, to put into words what that performance meant, you know, for the outcome of the game and for our team. I think um, the eighth inning was the turning point, you know, getting through the eighth, uh, sending him back out there against their best hitters and um, striking out the side was amazing. Riley obviously did what Riley's done here and um, executed at a high level. Uh, really proud of him for getting through that. Uh, first and second one out, I believe it was in the 10th with uh, Lankford and Caglione. Um, and then uh, offensively, I think we did a lot of things right. I mean, getting sprout out before the fifth inning um, was a, a good job by our team. You know, he's going to be a high draft pick, and we executed really well there. Um, hit into tough luck when with the bases loaded there with Tommy, uh, lining, lining the third base. I uh, thought that was a good at bat. Um, Sprout did a nice job wiggling out of it where we might have been able to add some on early. Um, but we just stayed with it, and, and Tommy and Cade getting those swings were outstanding. So on to tomorrow. Okay, let's uh, open it up for questions for the student athletes. And I saw Koki first. Uh, Cade, I was talking to Trey after the game, and he said the first time I met you was after a high school football game. Do, do you remember that interaction at all? And uh, what's your relationship sort of like with Trey? <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, first and foremost, you know, he's one of my best friends and, you know, someone, even though he's younger than me, uh, I admire him. You know, I kind of look up to him just, you know, uh, the way he goes about his business. Uh, he's so strong mentally. Um, you know, he, he's going to play professional baseball for so long and he's one of the best first baseman I've ever seen and maybe college baseball has ever seen. But I do remember that about football. Uh you know, we mess with him all the time that we used to pick on one nine. Uh, we, by high school, didn't throw the ball often, but Trey was a cornerback, and we would go after him every time. <laughs> it's nice. Leah? Leah Van, Baton Rouge Outkit. Cade, can you just take us through that last at bat and what you were seeing at the plate? Yeah, I mean, you got to give credit to Brandon uh, Neely first. I mean, he's unbelievable, and, you know, he's, he's one of the best pitchers in the country, and he has a great fastball. Um, you know, my prior at-bat, he struck me out on three straight heaters, so I, I figured he was going to go back to that. Uh, I, it was not pretty. Um, and then the first pitch blew by me again, so I knew he was going back with it. They weren't going to switch anything up, and finally got one that I was uh, supposed to swing at and uh, put a good swing on it. Okay, right over here. Matt Tallery from World Baseball Network. Ty, uh, tying the NCAA College World Series strikeout record with 17 strikeouts tonight. Um, what's it like to just have a guy like Alex Malazzo be such a um, good catcher behind the dish um, for the course of the season? Yeah, I mean, Alex has been great for us all year. I know uh, this is actually the first time Alex caught me in a couple weeks and stuff, but uh, he came up and, like he's caught me all year and stuff. He was able to steal me some pitches tonight, um, able to block some balls out when I needed it and stuff. But I'm, uh, also I know that other teams are threatened by his uh, arm, so I know that runners don't run as much on him. Okay, uh, Michael first. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge, staying with Ty. Just what was working tonight? It looked like the fastball had a lot of rise on it. You kept going to it. What did you feel out there? Kind of short rest for you, but one obviously your best performance. Yeah, I mean, I felt good. I felt uh, with as many people as were here tonight, uh, the adrenaline felt good and stuff. But um, I just knew that throwing my fastball at the top of the zone and being able to th mix in off-speed pitches enough to be able to get them off was the biggest key for the night. But Wilson? Ty, kind of sticking with that theme, in your last start you were rolling up until the sixth inning. Uh, was there anything that you changed between starts in order to then to be able to do what you did, kind of keep it going deeper into a game? Um, I don't think so. I think it was just staying mentally strong about it, just knowing that my stuff's going to play and just having confidence in myself and knowing what I do well. Okay, Matt. Matty Marines, White and Blue Review. Ty, how did you shake off the go-ahead home run by BT and 
just get right back to mowing them down? I just know that my stuff was going to play. I know that he put a really good swing on a good fastball and stuff, so you got to tip your cap. But I knew that I got a great offense behind me that's going to back me up and get the game back on the game. I'm going to go with Clint right here and then Michael. Yeah, uh, Glenn West, go 247. Uh, Kate, I mean, you guys offensively were, you know, getting on base and having a lot of opportunities. It just didn't kind of capitalize there in the first part of the game. Just how do you guys stay, I guess, mentally in there when you know that you're having success but just not seeing it in terms of the run scored and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, baseball is a tough game. And, you know, when runners get on, that's when pitchers tend to make their best pitches. And, you know, that's when they rise to the occasion and you know, make good pitches and stuff like that. But, I mean, in terms of not getting the job done, you know, no one's freaking out about it. And, you know, we just got to keep playing the game and, you know, keep putting ourselves ourselves in those opportunities. And you just know eventually we're going to come through and, you know, provide our pitchers with run support. Um, but, yeah, like I said, you know, baseball is hard. And, you know, with bases loaded earlier in the game, Tommy hit one like 110 right at the guy. You know, that's two runs right there. So, I mean, it could go either way. Michael. Michael Farrow with Burke Sports Network. Uh, question for Riley and Ty. It just seems like you guys have so much fun. The team chemistry is, you know, up the roof. You know, can you just kind of talk about the momentum you guys are having and how much fun you guys are having playing together? Riley. The chemistry is crazy. Uh, just so fun to be around the guys and what better place to be. And so we're just having a blast doing it. Yeah, I mean, our team chemistry has been amazing all year and stuff. Us pitchers are all really, really close and stuff, and uh, we support each other so much to each other, and we have so much success. Whenever We're a lot, we're very happy for them, them when they have a lot of success. Matt. Matt Towery, World Baseball Network. Riley, what's it like to have a guy like Josh Pearson step up in a big moment um, with that catch in the 10th uh, inning? I mean, that's sweet. That's what I'm talking about with just filling up the strike zone and trusting my defense and I completely trust him, and he saved me out there. And, uh, yeah, I was just continuing to fill up the strike zone. Leah. Uh, this question's for Riley, and then I have another one for Ty. Um, Riley, I just wanted to know, what was, like, your reaction to watching Ty strike out a guy after guy, inning after inning? And, Ty, you haven't been a guy who shows a lot of emotion on the mound, and I felt like that last strikeout you showed some. So what was going through your mind in that moment? Um, yeah, it was pretty, I mean, it's awesome to see, uh, I love Ty and he works really hard and just to see him do that was amazing, especially here in that game and especially the emotion fired me up too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never been known for my emotions and stuff, but I feel like when I show my most emotion is when I'm done, when I know I'm done. So I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I was able to get a little fired up and plus I knew the game was tight and I knew that we had to still win the game. Okay. Uh, right here, uh, Wilson first. Uh, Cade, if I understand correctly, you did not watch the last out. You were back in the batting cage. Why could you not? Uh, why, why were you back there, I guess? I, don't, I was just, you know, one, I had to use the restroom. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we got out, and I was just like, I'm going to stay back here. And was just like, when you have no control over something, you want something to happen so bad, so you tend to get a little nervous. Not to say I don't trust Riley because he's the man, and, he, you know, he does his deal, but I just like, I was wondering just because, like, anything could happen in baseball. And I had to pee. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Michael, right here, and then we'll go to Jack. I know the answer to this, but could I get all three players to just talk about playing for a national title tomorrow? Obviously, I know you're going to talk about the approach and staying within it, but how do you do that given what's on the line? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't make it anything bigger than it is. It, it's another baseball game. Um, and, you know, we, we're we always take the one game at a time, you know, one pitch at a time approach. And that works best for us. Um, so I think we're going to take the same exact approach. And we know what's, at line, or what's on the line. You don't need to, you know, say it or you don't, it doesn't need to be broadcasted. And the same thing when we were, you know, fighting for our season. No one, you know, you didn't hear this guy come in and be like, all right, we got to win or we're going home. Like, that's not the case. You know, we just, we just want to play baseball. We got to play a good game tomorrow. So that's all we're focused on. Yeah, but yeah, it's hard. It's cool to think about and stuff, but when it comes down to it, it's yeah, it's still just baseball, and still going to do the same thing we were doing the whole year because it's been working for us and stick to the approach. But yeah, it's it's fun to think about. I'm just chilling in my room. Ty, I mean, it's something we talked about since the fall. I mean, it's what we wanted to accomplish as a team and stuff. But we know that we still have to take every game at a time, and uh, it was as great as tonight felt and stuff. But we still know we need to get one more done. Okay, this will be our last question for the, for the players. Uh, Kate, Jack DeLongshaw here with Foul Pole. Kate, I got to ask you, man, you battled back from injury. 
Obviously, you're the heartbeat of this team, a fifth-year guy that's been in Baton Rouge for all y'all for half a decade now. To kind of be able to <laughs> ingrain your guys, right? The culture of what it means to be an LSU Tiger. Friends and family, obviously, here tonight. You got to walk me through what it means to have that moment with your family tonight. Uh, <laughs> half a decade. Gosh, man, I've been here for five years. Um, no, I mean, it, it, I just love this university so much and, you know, love – this especially this team you know there's so many good guys and good people on this team and you know some of my best friends you know I'm going to talk to them for the rest of my life and you know I just love playing baseball with them I think that's as, it's as simple as that and you know you ask every guy on the team and they'll give you the same answer you know it's it's nothing more than that um but yeah this this university especially you know I grew up uh in New Orleans you know wanting to be Mikey Matuk you know Ryan Sheff uh, Jared Mitchell, uh, you know, watching highlights of the 2009 national championship on repeat on YouTube when I was a kid. And, you know, this, this means the world, you know, one, just being in Omaha and two, playing for a national championship. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. All. <clears throat> okay. Questions. And we'll start with, with Michael here. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV and Beverage. Jay, um, going with Ty, you, you've talked all year about he's a winner, et cetera, but obviously the resiliency that he has to, to limit it, you know, you, you talked about that as well. Just his performance tonight, what does it mean to you to see it? Yeah, it's coaching, you know. Um, <laughs> and, and what I mean by no, what I mean by that is, I mean, we, we need to have a reason to be there. And um, when you have a guy that's as talented as that, Sometimes you just have to get them to the point they understand what they need to do to be successful and give them a path to execute that and then get them believing in themselves. And that's really all we've tried to do, you know, over over two years. And, um, you know, I mentioned he finished the season really strong last year. He was very unselfish at the beginning of this thing. The first two weeks of the season, we needed him in the bullpen until we kind of figured out who we were going to be. He did that, helped us get off to a good start there. And, um you know, like I said, he's had a terrific season and nothing better than that tonight. Um, but uh, we're not sitting here in, in this position without Ty Floyd. I feel like he's one of the most underrated, underappreciated, you know, players in college baseball this year. Okay. He beat you too. Wilson. You said there was a specific turning point for you in the eighth inning to send him back out there. What went into that decision? You know, um, we had a spot where we thought we would go to Riley and um, – you know, it was kind of, you know, we had Gidry down there warming up. I felt like we may get into a lengthy game just with, you know, Neely throwing the ball as well as he was. Those were the two guys we were going to use and, and go to. And so it was a little bit of a tricky spot. So for him to get two more hitters uh, was a big deal. And then there was no way with the way he pitch to Curland and Langford like it was it was Caglione was going to be his and uh, he deserved to finish that inning and um, I'm really glad he did made some great pitches and then allowed us to turn the ball over to Riley I think um, you know striking out the side with those three hitters right there that's that's legit that's pitching at the highest level especially when he'd emptied the tank to put us in the position he did for the first seven innings Leo Second game here, you've won in um, extra innings. I just wonder what goes into building that resiliency offensively, especially when things weren't seemingly going all's way at the beginning of the night. Yeah, I think um, I just I don't think we look at the game the same way people on the outside of the fence look at the game. I think we're facing a team that's won 53 games this year. We're facing a pitcher, and that's all we've faced here with our bracket. I mean, it's got to be one of the best pitching brackets in college World Series history. Like, we just don't get discouraged. We set the table in, the, I believe it was the second or the third, and Tommy hits the line drive. And then Sprout, you know, made some pitches. I think that was more him than us. I didn't think anybody thought anything of leaving guys on base or any of those types of things. And, and we got good hitters, and part of what good hitters do is they hit mistakes. And uh, Tommy was in a two-strike count right there. Uh, Fisher left the ball up, and he put a great swing on it. Um, Neely, I don't even know if it was that bad a pitch. I haven't seen Cade's home run, but he was in position to hit on time. He stayed short. He let the pitcher supply the power and, and put a great swing on it. So um, I think it's just it's we're doing what we do. And, um, you know, in that 
last inning before he hit the home run. We just we wanted to get kind of settled back down again. And um, you know, if somebody's going to hit a big home run in extra innings, maybe I'll just have the offensive meeting a little sooner because I, I, I like that. <laughs> okay, Matt. Yeah, Jay. I, you know, you come into this into these games after we've just been mesmerized by Skeens and Louder, and it feels like Ty has kind of like just flown by. But this is two performances now against really, really top-notch offenses where he's looked basically like this the entire time. Yeah, he he's there, and um, you know, he's he's. Uh, I think it's probably just because of Paul. You know what I mean? And, and Paul being so out of this world good nobody's really paid attention to him but the pro people are like he's not gonna last very long on that draft board and um somebody will be very very happy um with ty floyd and i think he'll pitch for a very long time and like i mentioned with a couple other of the pitchers in the game on thursday night uh there's a chance for it to be a short arc from omaha to you know a big league stadium for him go ahead uh, yeah, Coach Glenn West, go two four seven. Have you ever seen a, a story that's kind of quite like Cade's? I mean, just in terms of being from you know the New Orleans area and here for five years, and to be just coming up in these big clutch moments. Just, I guess, talk about you know just that that perspective a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of him. I think, um, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier, um, and he's had a great tournament, and so we've talked about him a lot. That um, he didn't have a very good 2021 season, and uh, we needed to shift some things but you know my first impressions were him where he was all about the team he all he wanted to do was be a great player for lsu he's never mentioned pro baseball one time it's just can i what can i do to help whether that's leadership fix my swing improve my approach maybe be able to play some first base and then he, you know, he wasn't playing at the beginning of the season because tommy hurt his shoulder and so we had to shift the dh position around and um I just kind of had a feeling we would get to our best team. He would be a part of that. And then um, that was really, really clear. And um, he never, never wavered, you know, in any of that. And, um, you know, I, I tell people all the time, like him going down last year, that hurt our team dr dramatically. And I think, you know, if you're paying attention to the College World Series, you can clearly see why. <clears throat> okay. Michael? Um, obviously, we, we talked about Kay, but, but Gavin as well, just – the veteran presence on this team and its ability to, to see the moment and then stay in it? Yeah, I think, um, you know, you have to have two things to, you have to have a little more than two things, but you have to have two things to get here and to win here. Um, you have to have future major league players. That's clear now. Like nobody is getting here anymore without future major league players. And you have to have old players that really know what they're doing. And those two guys really know what they're doing. And, um, you know, the, the buy-in piece of it, um, to just a new deal. Um, I mean, they, they've they've made this, you know, for me as an, as a new coach. Like those two guys have made this situation, program, culture. Um, they're as important as anybody. They don't get talked about the same way, you know, because you know you got Dylan, you got Paul, and those guys should be talked about too because they're leaders and they're special talents. But um, you know, when it was two to nothing. You know, it's like, OK, yeah, we know who drove in the first two runs today. And they're sitting right in that spot in the order for a reason, because I know what I'm going to get in terms of those at-bats. We have time for one more question for Jay. Matt's hands up. Yeah, I just wanted to ask about the catch with Josh, because we saw it the other night with Trey. Like, those are game deciders. I mean, we think about clutchness with pitching and hitting. What do you make of the, the elite defensive plays you guys have made with, that have changed games tonight? Yeah, I think uh, our team is super locked in. Um, you know, I have mentioned this before, Mark Wanaka, who positions our defense, is as good at that as anybody in baseball. And not college baseball, and is in, in baseball. And um, that's a tough one, you know, and, and you're, you're chewing on the matchup. You know, do you bring somebody in for Langford? I mean, he's hitting 390. But I'll, I think I'll go with the guy that's pitched here now six times. It's just been filling up the zone, and he got the ball down just enough where he couldn't elevate it and he got it just you know either in or off the barrel enough I can't I can't remember at this point and Josh was standing where he needed to be broke back and uh, made a heck of a play and uh, he's a good defender I had somebody ask me it's like hey are you going to kind of keep going with him he's maybe not swung the bat as well as some other guys here and it's like it's not even a thought because I know he's going to walk he's going to move the offense and he's going to play great defense in left field and and that was probably the defensive play of the game tonight. 
Okay, Jay, thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Gold jerseys tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you then.